it's Dean. Welcome back to the studio. And today I wanna to show you how to use a really powerful mixing tool called automation. Because it's become such a staple part of my own mixing process, I wanna pass along that information to you and show you how I use automation to get a more professional sounding mix from my bedroom studio. So first of all, what is automation? Well, very simply, it allows you to make custom adjustments to volume or any other effect at any given point in your song. For example, if one phrase within my vocal performance is way too quiet, I can actually automate the volume of that one single phrase without affecting the volume of any other part of that vocal performance. But again, you can automate more than just volume. You can automate reverb effects, panning effects, EQ effects, and about a million other things and you can even automate multiple effects on a single track. It's crazy. So next, let's look at where do you find automation and how do you start using it? If you're a GarageBand or Logic user, you simply hit A on your typing keyboard to bring up what we call automation lanes. Then you simply go over to the drop-down menu that appeared on your track header, and now you can choose what parameter or effect you wanna automate. Once you've selected your parameter, you can simply click at any point within the timeline to manually adjust that parameter. So now that you have a general idea on how automation works, let's talk about the five biggest and most common ways that I use automation within a mix. Number one, I use automation for manual volume adjustments. For example, I commonly automate the lead vocal to make sure that no phrases or syllables are too loud or too quiet. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So I'll boost quiet words or phrases so they don't get lost in the mix, and then I'll tone down some of the louder words and syllables, which in the end gives me a more balanced vocal. The second way that I'll use automation is to create a reverb tail on a vocal or an instrument. In this particular song, I wanted a huge reverb tail on my vocal as it went into the bridge. So within the automation menu, I selected my Platinum Verb plugin and chose its reverb time parameter. Then I created an upward slope, which means I'm increasing the reverb time, i.e. creating a reverb tail. They will give you praise. Oh. So sync and cool, right? The third common way that I use automation in a mix is to automate the volume of drum fills. Let me show you what I mean. I typically like to boost the volume of my drum fills when there's a big transition. So moving from a verse into a chorus, from a chorus back into a verse, from a chorus into a bridge, you get the idea. So I'll boost the volume of these drum fills to help accentuate the fact that we're transitioning to a different part of the song. and really cool way that I use automations are to create filter sweeps. On this particular song, I created the filter sweep on my master track, which means that every track would be affected by it. I typically like to do two moves to create a filter sweep. First is a high cut, which you do by going to the drop down menu, hovering over EQ and clicking the top option, high cut frequency. Next, make sure to go to your EQ and actually turn on the low pass filter because if you don't, you won't hear any of the moves that you're making. Next, create a slope from low to high because it's gonna cut down on those higher frequencies and slowly release them. Then the second move is to automate the low end, which I do again by going to the drop down menu, hovering over EQ and choosing low cut frequency. Again, you're gonna need to go in your EQ and make sure you've turned on your high pass filter this time because again, if you don't turn that on, you won't hear any adjustments that you're making. This time we're gonna create a slope from high to low as initially it'll clamp down on our low end and then slowly release it. So in the end with those two automated effects in place, it sounds like this. Fifth big way that I use automation is for volume fade ins or volume fade outs. On this song, I simply faded in individual pads as the start to my song. There's something beautiful about you. 
And on this song, I did a fade out on my master track so it faded all of my tracks out together simultaneously. So that's five big ways that I use automation, but I do wanna show you how to delete automation just in case you jack it all up. All you have to do is select the track you wanna delete automations from, go up top, click the mix drop down menu and select delete all automations on this track, which will effectively delete all automations on that track. And also I want you to know that anytime you add a new plugin to this track, then it shows up in the automation dropdown menu and now you can automate any parameter within that plugin, which is pretty loco. So to finish this video up, here's my two big tips when using automation. Number one is keep it simple. If you're new to automation, don't feel like you've got to try all these crazy moves. I would suggest starting with something more simple like volume balancing your lead vocal track and maybe say filter sweeps for like then my second big tip, and this is an important one so don't miss this, I would advise that you save automation moves for the very end of your mixing process. Because for example, if you automate your volume, you can no longer use the volume slider on your track header, you have to then manually adjust volume using automation. So that's why I do most of my heavy mixing first and then leave automation for last. This has been Dean. Thanks for joining me in the studio today. Go make some amazing music from your home studio and I'll catch you in another video.